You good girl. You want to talk about Project Metamorphosis? <coughs> We're going to talk about Metamorphosis. All right, you go see Mommy. We'll do that. Okay. Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent to talk to you about Project Metamorphosis and Confluent Platform 6.0. Project Metamorphosis, in the way that we normally talk about it, if you've been looking at those monthly demos and reading the blog posts, uh, is really kind of a cloud thing. We're talking about new features in Confluent Cloud and the way when you take all of those things together, they represent the combination of this completed event streaming platform in a cloud native way. You put all that together and you get something that is, if you'll pardon the expression, greater than the sum of its parts. And it really is, okay, if you think about the stuff, uh, there is something to it. But they're not just in cloud. With the advent of Confluent Platform 6.0, they are in the on-prem Confluent Platform as well. And let's take a look at what those themes are so far. We've got elastic tiered storage relates to that, self-balancing clusters. Cost effectiveness, also tiered storage and REST APIs, and to some degree KSQL. And this infinite aspect of Confluent Cloud comes to Confluent Platform with tiered storage. And globalness, of course. Confluent Platform runs in whatever major cloud provider you want, and now when you're running Confluent Platform on-prem or in whatever cloud provider you want, with preview feature cluster linking, uh, you've got that kind of global access as well. Now think about what it's like to scale just a regular Apache Kafka cluster. It's a good story, okay? It's an elastically scalable system, but it's manual. When I add a broker, none of my partitions, the actual log files sitting on the disks of those other partitions, they don't magically move over to the new broker. There's a command line tool I have to run. There's a JSON config file I have to write to make that happen. It's a thing that a skilled Kafka admin does. It doesn't happen by itself. When you add a node, a console platform node to the cluster, partitions will get moved around so that everybody has their fair share of the data. And you don't have to write so much as a single JSON config file and certainly not any YAML because we love you, that's why. And tiered storage figures into elasticity too, if you think about it. Now, in a traditional Kafka topic, I can specify a retention period. So after this age, messages should just die. They should go away. That's still true with tiered storage, but now I can set another date, another time, where after that age, uh, move that data off to a blob store. And that blob store is, for our purposes, infinite. So what that means is there's just less data on brokers to worry about. So as I scale the cluster and I do my automatic data rebalancing, it's nice that it's automated, right? But that doesn't mean I want to copy all of the data in the world from A to B. The, the act of moving that data is still a thing that has to happen in space and time. And so if I've got less data on brokers and the older data set in this infinite cloud blob store back there, I've got a little bit more elasticity. So those both participate in this elastic theme. The cost effectiveness really is an important aspect of the platform. Even if you're a developer, an administrator, you're building things, you're running things, uh, you don't sign checks, this still matters, okay? We're still accountable for building efficient systems. That's really a core aspect of engineering is optimizing for cost. So this matters to everybody. Broadly, we've got three categories of things that we can control. Infrastructure costs, you know, that's how many computers, how many disks, you know, what are our cloud costs? Uh, that's all infrastructure cost. Productivity, again, if you are building and running things yourself, uh, this is what you feel, right? Is the system a pain in the neck to work with? Is it difficult to automate? Do I have to write a bunch of framework code to get simple things done? Um, that contributes to productivity cost. Uh, there, there are the intangible costs, just unexpected things. There's downtime, there's security violations. When those things happen, when there is downtime, when there is some kind of major security vulnerability that is exploited, I assure you those costs are quite tangible, but they're difficult to quantify ahead of time just because the nature of the probability, right? This is like the probability of catastrophe, not the probability of things changing a little bit over time. And it's always hard to quantify those risks. So you just kind of think of them as, as, as intangibles, but they matter a lot. And it might be a little tedious if I read this whole chart, but if you look at the rows, you know, the, the row headings down the left there, uh, and each one of those impacts one of these cost effectiveness aspects. And this is something for everybody to think about. Again, if you're not the one signing the check, you might think, well, that's all negotiated by somebody three levels up for me in the org chart, and maybe they played golf with a salesperson or something. You know, it still matters. Uh, this stuff matters at the level of the individual engineer. We are accountable for building things that are cost effective in whatever way we can. Uh, that's always a, a concern that should be before us. So you should check this out. As the community's thinking about event streaming matures, uh, I am seeing an increasing concern with keeping data around for longer. 
All right, I still see plenty of Kafka topics with short retention periods. Little part of me dies every time I do, to be honest. But uh, we're beginning to get this sense that historical data, historical context around what's happening now matters. And so if I have some understanding about what happened in the past, that uh, helps me make better decisions about what's happening right now. I'm speaking very abstractly, but concretely, this has to do with things like, well, if I can create a table with case equal DB that summarizes a lot of data going back into the past, and I can join that table to an event that I'm consuming right now, I can do cooler things or implement more interesting and more valuable features uh, with that kind of a join to that table that has lots of context to work with. So this really matters, and when I describe it in those sort of businessy terms, it might seem like a thing that just flows over your head, but it doesn't. It's actually a thing that, that, that relates to very specific features that we as developers can use right now. But context is expensive. Context means long retention periods. Anytime I talk to anybody about retention periods, I'm talking to them about cost, right? That means more brokers, that means more disk, that means more cloud storage costs, whatever, however it is you get the job done, it's more of something. The cheapest storage that we can reasonably deploy uh, with reasonable latency these days is a cloud blob store or a compatible blob store on-prem if you've got that kind of thing deployed. And infinite retention, or what we call tiered storage, the ability to say, after a certain amount of time, we're gonna shuffle data off to a blob store instead of keeping it locally on disk, really does give you access to some new use cases, some things that you probably wouldn't have been able to contemplate building before just because they cost too much. You've got a more realistic way of making the case now to make Kafka your system of record where all your data lives. And a lot of us are kind of beginning to understand having all that data in a log, that's where it belongs. Databases are for queryable, materialized views of things. They're not the best for a system of record. You know, when you've got a distributed system, that's, that's probably a durable log. Now maybe that log is actually cheap enough to deploy. Now maybe you've got enough history to train interesting machine learning models that you can then turn into Kafka consumers or K-SQL user-defined functions that, that run the operationalized model. You know, all that kind of stuff becomes accessible now with infinite storage. So there's a lot to think about there and a lot that's potentially exciting about uh, that feature. And I don't need to belabor the point about how important this global theme is, right? This is the preview feature cluster linking. This means that I can quite realistically have, as a preview feature, uh, a cluster running in one cloud, uh, one region, one physical data center, and another cluster in another cloud, region, data center, whatever those things are, right? Uh, I can have those two clusters linked at the broker level, offsets preserved, all kinds of application architectures are suddenly unlocked to me and credible and an actual way to proceed. Things that have absolutely been done in the past with Kafka, but it's always felt like we weren't quite there yet, and now we are getting there. So this is a key theme and another just key way that you can benefit as a Confluent Platform user from these project metamorphosis themes, these things that happen in the cloud first. They're now coming to on-prem as well, and they're making your hybrid cloud deployments a little bit more sensible. So there you go. There's a little bit of an idea how some of those metamorphosis themes that you thought were just cloud things are now directly benefiting you as a user of Confluent Platform 6.0. And of the eight themes of project metamorphosis, I've only been able to talk about four. There's more to come, four of them more to come. And those will also find their way into future versions of Confluent Platform. So keep your eyes open.